Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual, so here's your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And I'll start by asking, what is new to you, Alex? Well, last night we had <laughs> the uh, local book launch for my, my new chapbook of poems. And... OMG, no way, how was it? <laughs> <laughs> um i was there and it was fantastic it was it was fun um the way i keep describing it was like it wasn't like super packed or anything but it didn't feel like empty or it was just kind of cozy yeah exactly um and the whole event space was really cozy um shout out yeah it was a house (laughs) yeah it's it's a house that's sort of been renovated for business purposes um they do like uh, cannabis related events there. So, um, but it was, it you was gotta good. love the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> right. Right. Um, they do like these, uh, lifted events. So they'll like smoke pot and then write some poetry or they'll smoke pot and then do some like painting or, or ceramic making. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. I didn't even know that space was there, which is crazy. Cause that's the neighborhood I used to live in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I lived like, Five minutes from there. (laughs) Yeah. It was was was, really, really fun. Yeah, it was a fun turnout. I'm so exhausted. Like, (laughs) I bet. Because we had to move all of the furniture out and then move all, like, the chairs around and get the food set up. And then, like, it's... You don't realize how worn out you get by, like, small talk and, like... uh, I I was basically the MC as well, just because I didn't want to make anybody else do it, so... I kind of wore myself out there, and then I got home, ate a bunch of the leftovers, so then I couldn't sleep. <laughs> so I'm just they like... Were, it was good Ugh. nipples, though. Oh, yeah. I've got I've got lunch for the next year. <laughs> <laughs> not sure it'll keep that long. But... Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was a good spread. It was a great time. I, had, I really enjoyed it a lot. And your, uh, your guest poets were really really great and just such nice cool people i was so impressed by not only their work because i mean they've grown a lot even though i haven't known some of them the longest time but they've grown their work's grown a lot and then also they picked really great stuff i I, all i said was like oh here's a theme you can follow it if you want you don't have to and a lot of them either picked a theme and or a similar theme and went with it or they like sort of catered their own mini theme within it which was really cool so yeah it was awesome that was a really really great time and i got my signed copy woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> yes and then i had you sign it in literary merit magenta so <laughs> it's a very teal book so yeah mm-hmm. like that aqua blue and so i, I, I had to have you sign I'm, it in pink i'm gonna have to find a teal pen but it just works so well with the set that i have that i don't know it's a lot of work it's a good set of pens yeah <laughs> well gosh i know that you're probably you've probably just mostly been really busy putting that together but have you been up to anything else oh uh, oh yeah i've been building my um my halloween mask yeah i've seen the pictures that thing looks rad did you get like a template from the internet or something yeah so there's this website called wintercroft and that's like the last name of the artist who designed them all and they're like these low poly animal masks um and And just you just make them out of folded paper yeah so what you do is you you print them out and then you uh tape them or glue them sorry to uh a thicker card so i used like poster board like thin poster board okay um and then you cut them all out, and then you either glue or tape them together. I taped them because my glue was not sticking. <laughs> yeah, you, you glue really is not, like, great across the board. Like, you need a specific glue for a specific job. Yeah, and, and like, the folds really, once everything's together, they sort of almost l- latch in a little bit. But when, once you're first starting to get it all connected, it's a little tough. Um, I can imagine. <laughs> I would highly recommend it as like if you need a project to work on and you want to do something a little cool and creative. Um, mm-hmm. It's not easy. I got a little frustrated near the end. So basically, I ended up with two halves of this um, bullhead. 
And I was like, yeah. how am I supposed to tape them together while simultaneously holding the two pieces? That, yeah, that <laughs> would present some problems. Um, Did you get like an extra set of hands to help you or something? No, I, I took a break so that I wouldn't be frustrated, <laughs> which is a very like smart thing to do that I was proud of myself for. Um, and then I um, like held one half in my legs and then I sort of decided to try a different half of it because it had like 16 different attachment points between the two pieces. So I just yeah. tried it from a different angle and it, and it worked. Cool. Yeah, no, it's looking super awesome. What are you going to do for the rest of the costume? I think, so what I, I've been talking to a couple people, I'm like, I think I'll just do like a hipster minotaur kind of thing. <laughs> so like the big bull's head and then just like, I don't know, some trendy clothes. I don't know. Yeah, some plaid maybe. Yeah, because um, most likely I'll probably... minotaur appropriate. Yeah, I'll probably just end up working the night of Halloween, so I might only get, like, two hours worth of Halloween party. Oh, um, yeah. So, uh, just having a mask is, is good. <laughs> yeah, well, I gotta say, it's a departure from last year's Halloween costume for you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to, like, do all the makeup and, and all that. Like, yeah. Yeah. For listeners, Alex was a very big witch. <laughs> <laughs> a very big witch, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I should change. The biggest witch I ever saw. I have um, uh, a character for my next collection of poems. Uh, it's called Fat Witch. So maybe I should change it to oh Big my Witch. Gosh. <laughs> big Witch. <laughs> it's the best way to describe it, I think. Yeah. Just a big, big witch. Well, because I'm 6'4 and I was wearing heels. And a, and a big wig, a really big wig. Big wig, big hat. Yeah, it was... It was a big costume. <laughs> what have you been up to? Uh, you know, I, I, not a great deal. I've been, honestly, I've been putting things off. Like, I really need to work on this freaking audio book mm-hmm. <laughs> that I'm making. But, um, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm starting to think about my Halloween costume and... Uh, you know, it's because it's a work day. It's a Tuesday, yeah. um, and my coworkers are like, "We're everybody dress up. We want to see your costumes. Come to work in costumes," which is great. It's fun. I love yeah. that they're encouraging mm-hmm. that. But like, I was gonna dress up as Taco from the Adventure Zone, oh. but I think I'm gonna nix that because I don't want to spend all explaining day explaining it. to yeah. people what I am and feeling weird yeah. about it. Because it's like this is gonna sound dumb and weird. Like, you're not gonna get it, and I'm not gonna have fun. You're so. like you're a Taco. <laughs> what? I mean, I guess you could yeah, just get like... Yeah, to be like, oh, uh, I'm this weird elf wizard who is kind of like a hot mess. I don't know how to explain to you what Taco is. So all you I have to say is, I have magic together. powers. That's all you have to say. Yeah, I have magic powers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'm probably just... Because, like, I don't want to... Especially because it's like, I don't know if I'm even going to be able to do anything on Halloween. Yeah. Like, maybe I'll go out with my dad's girlfriend's daughter to take her trick-or-treating. Mm-hmm. But, like, I've got nothing to do. I've got nowhere to go. And so I think I'm probably just going to bust out my Ren Faire costume and wear that to work. That's easy, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's easy. I'm proud of it. I want a chance to wear it again. Um, I can show it off. People will be like, that's so cute. And I'll be like, ah, I made it. <laughs> so <laughs> Well, you can do, like, a fun be... makeup kind of look, too, with it, too. You could... Yeah. Because, I mean, that, sort of, that do... sort of, like, costume, you can do, like... A fairy makeup, or you can do like you can dress it up yeah. in a lot of ways. I might, yeah. Tomorrow, Will and I are gonna go shopping. We decided it's been too long since we just like went out and shopped. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm very excited. And <laughs> <laughs> while we're out, I might try to like pick up some embellishments or something for the costume, just to you know change it up, make it a little more fun. Yeah. But yeah, I haven't really been doing anything at all. I don't think unless like there's something that I did that's like. Duh, I just completely <laughs> spaced it right now. But, well, you've been yeah, doing a good know. job um, keeping up with the, the podcast Twitter. We've seen more of you there. I'm trying. Really cool. We've got, like, followers now. So <laughs> <laughs> like, I gotta post some stuff. I should probably log yeah. in and, and, and help with that, too. But I've, it's, well, it, it's hard anytime to, you want to. It's hard to bounce between them, you know? Yeah, um, so yeah, check check the Twitter um, listeners because I, I posted a link to the newest episode of Movies with Mikey, our favorite YouTube show, because um, he just did a, an episode on Hot Fuzz, which I think 
has a lot of interesting interaction with our last episode on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I actually just watched it this morning and was like, okay, um, relevant. <laughs> so, so I shared a link on there. I really recommend checking it out. It's a great show. It's very entertaining and fun, but he's got a lot of smart things to say. He's so smart and he's, he's also Mikey. so positive, which is so in line with our whole motive, you know? Mikey. <laughs> You're so great, Mikey. Yeah. Well, um, what do you say we just uh, hop right into it? Sure. So, because it's a spooky time, <laughs> uh, this episode's going up the day before Halloween. Um, so, of course, we had to do something. Um, the new uh, Amazon Prime series, Lore, based on the hit podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts I've ever listened to. I just blazed through the entire backlog of it. It's so, so good. Um, but the the Amazon Prime series just came out on Friday the 13th. And I thought it would be an interesting thing to talk about. Um, for anyone who hasn't uh, listened or watched, basically Aaron Menke, the host, he just tells you about spooky folklore from all over the world mostly western stuff but not strictly um just like telling you stories and like sort of interrelated concepts and stuff each episode um, of the podcast tends to center around um sort of a con one little concept and then sort of branches off um, and talks about, you know, different ways that that concept is manifested in folklore uh, in different places. Uh, there's this great episode <laughs> about, like, ships and shipwrecks um, <laughs> of the podcast that mm. I really, really enjoyed. Um, you know, talking about, like, shipwrecks and lighthouses and um, just a really interesting sort of a theme for folklore. Because obviously there's going to be plenty out there but you don't necessarily yeah it's think not of like, it as like a it's genre not like of a, folklore it's not like a cryptid it's not like a monster not it's yeah not, not a creature it's not or like a, a serial killer or you know or yeah haunted house or yeah. something yeah like you it's it's something you might not come to initially and he's got a lot <laughs> of episodes of this podcast so you know he's got to get creative with his themes but the um, amazon series is mostly what we're talking about today no doubt we will be comparing the two <laughs> to some degree <laughs> Uh, but it's six episodes, um, and they're definitely sort of more uh, broad, sort of iconic topics, but that's to be expected for the first season of yeah. this series, just as sort of an entry point. Um, so I guess we can just start by uh, talking about what, what did you think of it? Like, what are your initial thoughts and responses to it? So I, I started with the first episode, and at first I was like, what is going on? Like, because <laughs> it, it they like slowly introduce like, I don't know, like two to three vaguely connected stories or families. Mm -hmm. And then they like reenact this like whole thing. And it's like, where is this going? Where is this going? It's interesting, but where is this going? Yeah, remind me, the first episode, was that they made a tonic? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes, um, and sort of the main theme of this one ended up being sort of like, sort of like vampires? Yeah, and, and honestly, I, I was like skipping through the episode, because I just, it was not like, it didn't make sense at first, and then I, and, mm -hmm. and then I got to the, the last like, five minutes, and then at the end it's like, and that's how the modern vampire was created, and I'm like, what? <laughs> that was about vampires? Right, it was, it was like. It was so strange and, like, such a roundabout way to explain that. But I don't think I would have um, been left with the same sort of impact of it if they had started off with, like, this is the vampire episode. Yeah. Um, it's sort of interesting, the the difference between pod the podcast episodes and the uh, TV episodes. I don't know what to call it because it's not on TV. It's Amazon, but it's like, still TV. That's what they still call yeah, it. Yeah, it's TV. I don't know. It's just weird. We need new words. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, sort of m the format of most podcast episodes is he'll start with one small anecdote that sort of 
is an entry point into the theme of the episode mm-hmm. or um you know like the like the shipwreck episode it was it was a really interesting anecdote because it wasn't even really folklore it was actually a thing that happened just a few years ago um that's that was a real real thing where there was this derelict ship that was headed for the coast of Ireland and they were especially concerned about it because they happened to know that it was full of crazy rats. What? Because <laughs> all of the humans, all of the human sailors had a had abandoned the ship and but of course there's always going to be some vermin yeah. on a ship and so there was this population of rats that had been living on the ship and they presumed that these rats would have eaten through all of the food um on the ship and then probably begun cannibalizing each other and so by the time this ship reached the shore it would just be this frenzied swarm of starving rats <laughs> and they were like what are we going to do? <laughs> and so it was this very interesting little anecdote, and he uses that sort of as an entry point to like, and also there are other scary ships that are maybe a little bit more fantastical than that. Uh, so that's that's generally how they begin, and so you sort of have an idea what you're in for, and I'll agree, especially that first episode, yeah. it feels a little off kilter a little disjointed maybe i'm yeah. not sure and i think it, it's also like the the sort of genre of the the whole show it's like it's like very much um you know how uh history channel and science channel have sort of devolved into these semi uh, <laughs> yeah yeah you know pseudo scientific pseudo scientific like, semi reality thrilling. shows like yeah it's very that um but really well like his um his narration is really really clear and really like it's like monotone but really smart alecky kind of too yeah he's got a good sort of dry wit yeah. about him um, um and you know yeah he's 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 by this point a very experienced voiceover artist yeah. so. <laughs> and the acting <laughs> having done the podcast the for acting a couple years. for the for the re- recreations is not like god awful it's pretty good yeah you know, I don't know. I was on the fence. The dramatizations sometimes they were pretty good. Sometimes they were a little less than good. Okay, yeah. I, 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 don't, I only watched about three of the episodes, so I didn't get a, like a okay. perfect. Um, per- it, it also depends on like what story, because like in the they made a tonic episode, mm-hmm. it was very like we're watching it happen. There wasn't too much interaction between the characters. Um, yeah. Whereas Black Stockings, it times... was all about the relationships between the characters. I. I really enjoy. You know, I want to talk about Black. Stockings. We will, of course, yes. That, uh, <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, yeah. Was there something else you wanted to get to first? No, or I was just sort of. I... We can jump into it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I wanted to say about that, especially on the subject of the dramatizations, is that because um, I will say all of most of these main stories um, in these episodes are stories that have already been covered on the podcast. I mean, it's no great surprise. Yeah. They're sort of mm-hmm. like the big good hits from the podcast yeah. and he threw in a couple little like adjacent stories that i don't recall hearing well he, i mean he but... already had the research so why like do more yeah, you know like these are it's, these it's are whole super new format, research heavy so. i would say that is probably mm-hmm. the most impressive part of the show that and like the cool animation is like the research behind yeah. this it's incredible yeah i really enjoyed incredible that. yeah well and it, as a sidebar, yeah, apparently Aaron Mankey started this podcast because he, he's actually a, a novelist and he writes like thrillers and mysteries and spooky stories. Mm-hmm. And so he, in order to research for his stories, he would, you know, read about a lot of interesting folklore yeah. and like scary stories and things that may have happened and, you know, mysteries and stuff. And so he just had all of these really fascinating stories compiled that he's like, well, I can't really do anything with these. Like, you know, I have so much here that I'm not even using in my books. It's just such cool information. I want to share it in some way. So he started writing like some essays. Okay. And he's like, these are too long winded. No one's going <laughs> to read these like for fun. Yeah. What do I do with them? And he decided like, well, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Maybe someone might want to listen to them. Yeah. Um, so he just kind of had a lot of this stuff already and was like, I just need to tell this to people it's so cool uh but on the subject of black stocking so yeah that was one that i remembered from the podcast i'm sure there are a lot a lot that i've forgotten because it's (laughs) sort of a long series at this point but that one really stuck out to me it was an interesting you know the story of bridget and her husband believing that she's a changeling um 
and he just sort of described her. You know, like yeah. it's a podcast, and you know, there's that's the big difference between the show and the podcast is is the dramatizations. Yeah. And so he's just like, oh, you know, Bridget was a you know strong, independent woman, and she was an entrepreneur, and you know, she maybe didn't fit in with her community because of her strong will and her you know, whatever. And so it's like, okay, I get the idea of this woman, yeah. but it's a totally different thing to see it dramatized. Yeah. And I got to say, like, listening to the podcast, you know, he's just telling the stories of like, and then, you know, that night her husband, you know, in a fit of rage, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And it's like, it's an interesting story, but you don't really feel the impact oh, of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. You're just sort of hearing it. It's almost like a, in a journalistic yeah. way in the podcast and to see it was intense. like that the moment when she was accidentally killed in that episode really hit me yeah. in a way that that whole episode of the podcast did not yeah. like i thought it was an interesting story but the idea of just like this terrible struggle and she falls and she hits her head and it was just like oh god like what a terrible thing to be be put through I, <laughs> like the, the moment it, for it, me it, that was really intense from that episode was when she was trying to sort of pretend to be herself in order to stop her husband from torturing her yeah where she's just like what does he want me to be right? what does he believe oh, that i am how can horrifying. i make him understand yeah. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's terrifying. And and so, you know, sometimes I'd say the dramatizations don't always land. They might, they're a little, I don't know, questionable of quality sometimes. But when it works, yeah. it really heightens the impact of the stories and, and, and reminds you like, you know, this may be some sort of fantastical folklore, but a lot of it comes from real things that happened. Yeah. And there may be other explanations for it. But like, this is something that a person went through, whatever it was. Yeah, and I... That the acting in, in, in that particular one was so so the the main character Bridget was played by Holland Roden, who um was on Teen Wolf and I loved her from Teen Wolf. Her character in Teen <laughs> yeah, Wolf I, I, is the best character in Teen Teen Wolf. Um and Yeah, I noticed there were a few in, in different episodes there were a few sort of maybe less well known but still yeah, notable mm -hmm. actors. But I also thought the husband, whoever he was in that episode what a horrifying portrayal. He really sold he it, I thought. Like, he yeah, didn't seem like he was did. acting, which is pretty pretty crazy. <laughs> like, he just seemed yeah. like he was an angry husband. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I will say, like, that was a character that was a little harder to understand in the podcast. Okay, yeah. It's like, what are you going through, dude, yeah. that, like, you would do this and think this? But the way they set it up with him, like, already feeling, like, jealous yeah, of Yeah, he's being left behind by the suspicious. times. Like... Yeah, he's suspicious yeah, of his her, wife is, and he feels is becoming like, this independent businesswoman, and he's like, and that's not what he signed up for. That's not what he signed up for, and <laughs> that's not what he's been taught. He's been taught that yeah. he needs to be the breadwinner. He's also been taught that fairies are real, and that yeah, it, it all sort of ties does. in together so with his sort in. of old fashioned yeah, beliefs. He, and it's so like interesting and, and scary. It's that's the scary one, and it's like not even the really scary topic either. It's about fairies. Yeah, because. Yeah, it's a change. I mean, like it's it's conceptually scary, but it's not like a necessarily a threat. Yeah. Like the the person who's supposedly the changeling is the one being threatened. Like changelings aren't aren't really ever like a danger. They just kind of yeah, suck, they suck, and then the know? person that gets stolen away lives with the fairies. Like that doesn't sound that bad. Yeah, like <laughs> it's yeah, it's about something being taken from you, but it's already happened. Like the changeling in their place isn't like a threat to you. Maybe you just don't like them, yeah. or they're gonna you know let you down, or they're difficult to take care of, or something. And like as an aside, they do sort of go into the idea of like where changeling stories came from, and as a way of sort of people not understanding what's actually going on, explaining away illness, yeah. mental mm -hmm. illness or um, developmental disabilities yeah. where, you know, some person either ha go undergoes a rapid change in their life. Maybe they are suddenly experiencing clinical depression. Yeah. And of course, back then, they yeah. didn't know what mm -hmm. clinical depression was. And so the loved ones are sitting there thinking, you're not the person that I know. Like, you're... You've you're been stolen away by fairies. I love. You, clearly, yeah, you're something else. You've been taken away, and this is somebody else because this isn't the person that, that makes I me know. Think, I mean, that's think super a tragic. Because they said it happened to children a lot, too, and that makes me think of um, oh, yeah. some forms of autism where 
Like, it doesn't kick in mm-hmm. until they're, like, two or three. And then it's just, like, well, a complete and personality honestly, change, and they, and they go silent. And, and, and with, you know, these kinds of things, sometimes it would happen that, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily a sudden change, yeah. but, you know, the, the infant was just... You know, as they developed, you're like, there is something wrong with this baby. There's this. This isn't a normal, healthy baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, somebody with uh, congenital disorder, oh, yeah. you know, developmental disabilities, or whatever. And you think it's like this, like changeling thing happened very early. Like that, my baby, my little infant, got stolen away and replaced with a sickly fairy baby. Yeah. Uh, so yes, they do go into these kinds of things with all of the episodes, all the topics of like, here's the real life explanation for why these stories happen. And I think that that was probably the best part of They Made a Tonic was like, um, the first episode was like all the stuff about the heart and like, Mm -hmm. and how uh, in the anima. Yeah, with the spirit and the... Yeah, and like how, oh, if their body's not all the way decomposed, we have to exhume them and kill them Yeah, like clearly they're a monster and there's something wrong. It was so, it was like, and, and and I loved in that episode during the the sort of like uh, dramatization they they dig up one of the the children of the of the main character and she's not like completely rotten yet and that's their explanation that she's a vampire yeah basically. she hasn't decomposed um, properly <laughs> but then one person uh, one little I don't know minor character is like it's just been cold yeah like she was she was kept <laughs> in a shed in the winter time like she she was just preserved naturally this isn't. Yeah, the doctor um, is there. She's like, guys, come on. But even he comes around at a certain point where he's just like, fine, superstition it is, I guess. Uh, well, I mean, but can you imagine, like, the consumption? What was it, like, a third of everybody in New England or something cons- like that? Yeah, it was crazy, the number of people in the 1800s that died of tuberculosis. So, like, people becoming desperate and, and turning to crazy ideas is completely understandable um i mean horrific but like i I, they didn't know what was going on and they they did go into like how uh or was it no maybe it was in a later episode that's just sort of related you didn't watch the one about the haunted house right um the seance one yeah no you just i did watch that one yeah so i watched they made a tonic, black stockings, and passing notes. Passing notes. Passing notes was passing notes. yeah the spiritualist. The spiritualist one. one. Yeah. I feel like that one has a lot to do with the first episode. It does. Um, the it does because of... they're both about the spiritualism, and they also mention the two um, philosopher people um, or the scientists. There was like one who was talking about the anima. Yeah, was and it? And then one was talking about the animal energy or yeah, whatever. Yeah, mesmer with his like animal yeah, magnetism. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, those are really similar. Yeah, yeah, that's what sort of sparked it in my mind that they're similar. And, you know, this is a time where, like, science is progressing by leaps and bounds, but medical yeah. science is sort of lagging behind. And so people are mm-hmm. open to all of these crazy new ideas of things they never thought were possible, but they don't know where that line and is. They don't know how like, that will extend. They're trying to piece together how science and religion fit. Yeah. So they're like, how do they fit? Do they fit? Are they conflicting? I know that in passing notes, there's a moment when I think one of the doctors is like, or somebody's like, um, it might have even been uh, the narration. It was like, um, oh, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, was, it was something about like, oh, somebody said, um, the, this new science, it fits perfectly with with our conception of religion. And I think they were talking about the seance stuff. Oh, yeah. No, it was, yeah, the guy um, in, in passing notes, the patriarch of the family, the father saying, like, uh, you know, the because the priest was like, listen, like, you're, this is crazy stuff, and this isn't, you know, this is irreligious. And he's saying, no, like, science is allowing us to witness the wonder of God in a yeah. way that we never have. Mm-hmm. God, yeah. I believe, intends us to see his creations in this new way now. Like, this has always been here. We just haven't been able to observe it. Yeah, and I thought it was cool because, like, the whole seance comes from a scientist, Mesmer. Um well, and, and let's be clear, he didn't actually invent that, just sort of, like, spun off yeah. from his concepts. Oh, yeah, no, he didn't invent, like, this mystical way of communicating. With... No, he was just a hypnotist, no. basically. He, he, was a, he was a hypnotist who did stuff with magnets. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's weird. <laughs> um, and, like, some seances sometimes have, like, a, um, a, a hypnotism factor in there, but... Um, Somebody going into like a, a trance or something. Yes, yes. Um, but... Th- 
it's just interesting how it started off as like a scientific kind of thing and then it sort of spun out into this Yeah, because they just didn't know like they were just there was so much in the world that they were learning about that they just never conceived of before so they were just like anything is possible just anything and I love is the, possible. I love those twins that just made a big buck out of it. Oh, the Fox sisters. Yeah, they're an interesting <laughs> case. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know about I love, them. I absolutely love how he saves, like, the tidbits really towards the end. So, like, he talks about them about, probably about a third of the way through the episode. And he's like, yeah, they did these seances and, like, they were super popular. Um, and it was really crazy and cool and talks about all that. And then near the end, he's like... They were total it, frauds. It was made up, completely made up. They were producing these clicks and pops with their bodies, and yeah, which they were so just really good cool. at like conning people. Yeah, which <laughs> I and, love. <laughs> yeah, and like they get into whole, Houdini's whole like debunking right? that was really cool too. crusade. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then of course, like there's so much each episode talks about. Like then it goes into Sir Arthur Conan Doyle about yeah. his like obsession. Oh, and that that recording. Yeah. Okay, I so know. I want to look into that. I'm gonna right. I want. I really wish I would. I knew if that was real or not. Okay, yeah, so I basically, mean... for listeners out there, um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was friends with um, Houdini. Houdini did not believe in um, uh, spiritualism. The supernatural. And man, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was obsessed. Everything he believed in fairies. He believed in ghosts. Like, <laughs> well, and to the point where he says, "No, I don't believe. I know." Yeah. <laughs> right. And then um, his his widow. Like, for 10 years, did seances to try and contact him. No, that was him. Houdini's widow. Was it Houdini's widow? Yeah, Houdini's widow. Because he was like, this is all, all made up. And so for 10 years, no. she tried. And at, at the end of the 10 years, she was like, yeah, we're never going to talk to Houdini again. This is Okay, work. there was He's that. And there. then there was, somebody was contacting. Oh, yeah, it was that giant seance they did for Arthur Conan Doyle. Yeah, where and they supposedly got that recording. They got So basically, they got this recording of him saying, you know, basically like oh my w wife and kids i love them this place is really weird i've met god i don't know it was it yeah. was so creepy yeah i so this is another thing i want to get into yes. because i feel like maybe this show wasn't produced with the rigor that i am used to from the podcast okay I, i'm i'm concerned that there are um maybe with these producers hands in it because the podcast is pretty much strictly an Aaron Mankey affair yeah. mm -hmm. whereas they're ma making this tv show maybe there are people who want to play it up put some ancient aliens nonsense in there <laughs> uh I think that maybe well I like I, I know for certain that there are kind of factual slip-ups in this show that I don't I don't notice in the podcast it's possible that they're okay. happening and they're just not things I've caught but like in the um in the first episode, when they're talking about safety coffins, he makes the claim, uh -huh. they make the claim, I'm not going to put it all on Aaron Mankey, he just happens to be the narrator, yeah. they make the claim that mm -hmm. the term saved by the bell comes from safety coffins. That's a bit, right? it's not true. That like, that's a, little... a bit of sort of folk etymology that gets passed around in, yeah, that's, that's okay. just not true. It's a popular misconception, but it's like, that's not what I expect. And so it calls into question a lot of other things where it's like you're gonna you're gonna say something like yeah. that that's just like provably false so it makes me suspicious of the rest in of that it. case in that case i would blame a writer because his tone per says that like oh it's kind of yeah. like a joke but the, the the words he uses are like yeah oh that's where it comes from he should have said something like oh makes you think say yeah, and so like i'm that, going to know? say or yeah, talk I'm about say by the bell. There is some stuff in there that I, I think that maybe in the podcast he may not have claimed. He may have, you know, been a little bit more. He may have done more due diligence on his own, but I believe that because yeah. of studio expectations, there is some stuff that was put in there that isn't necessarily credible. Yeah, they're probably hamming it up a little bit and trying to make it. I mean, like, because here's the thing with with the podcast. More and Aaron Mankey's you know? editorialization. He's like, I'm telling these stories as they exist. Now, there are other explanations for these things. Do we know what happened? No. So I'm just going to tell you this story, and it's, you know, it's a question mark. What happened 
what for real like where these things came from and you know sometimes he'll tell a story and then be like and guess what probably none of that is true because these people that are featured in the story there's no record of them existing like like he's like these are stories that get passed around and this is folklore and it doesn't necessarily come from a place of you know factual reality but these are the stories that people tell and that's what the focus is for the podcast is these are the stories that people tell for whatever reason and we can speculate what actually happened or why these stories came to be but this isn't necessarily you know he's it, like it, like I said it gets into some kind of ancient alien stuff this discovery channel weirdness where they're yeah. just like and it happened whereas I don't think he would take <laughs> that tone in the podcast normally yeah and 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 I think that's why it, it was hard for me to get into the show at first because of that like it, it's it's a little over the top just like again with the genre they picked mm -hmm. um and the sort of style of the show that so mimics those cheesy you know ancient aliens like you said but like ancient aliens, like I I hope they don't try and go more in that direction. Or not. But like I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world because ancient aliens is entertaining as hell. Yeah, but I think it's a disservice to the original podcast oh, series. Oh, for sure. I I you know I haven't really listened to the podcast, but I would agree. Like, and you can tell that um, Aaron is really in like he loves this stuff. So hopefully. It stays about where it's at with like some of the like slip ups and an over dramatization, um, yeah, and not like keep going overboard, you know. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, and what I really want to talk about today, I think the most sort of interesting thing to talk about to take away is not like because you know I'm not concerned with like and did it happen for real? It's like we don't know. I don't know. Probably yeah. not. But it's, it doesn't really matter because the point is, why are these stories being told? Mm -hmm. You know, this these yeah. this is folklore. This is the stories that people are choosing to tell each other. This is this is what's being passed down. This is what it's it's a it's a finger on the pulse of our culture and our fears. And that's, I think, the much more interesting thing to consider. You know, why do we want to yeah. talk about, you know, why do we want to tell these stories? Yeah, and I, I think Black Stockings, of the ones that I watched, was probably the most important for various reasons. Like, it shows you um, really in your face, like, treatment of women in the mentally ill and in the mentally ill and it, and it and it's like it also shows you like where anger can lead you to yeah um, it's sort of cautionary tale and fear uh yeah i mean this this is a story of yeah. a woman who's pressing against the confines of her culture she's grieving and she doesn't get along with her husband like that's all that's happening <laughs> you yeah. know well and also it's also like she she's sort of pressing against the confines of her culture but also like i think they mentioned a little bit later they're like oh she's not that weird like that's that's just the way things are kind of going now you know yeah she she was um, just she was a modern woman um yeah and then and, and then his obsession with those black stockings his obsession yeah. with the black, yeah, those her, black stockings and her red really knickers <laughs> Oh my, yeah, that's so like, but the thing is that's still happening. It's so, I mean, yeah, I think that's why we both responded to that episode so much is because it feels yeah. so so prescient, so relevant still. Well, I mean, like they in the episode they talk about, um, uh, I think it was in that one, um, where they talk about committing women to insane asylums. And it's like, that was happening until like the 70s. Yeah, yeah, where a, a man could just have his wife committed because he yeah. felt that she needed to be for whatever personal reasons. Or, or because of um, a hysteria. Yeah, you know, that real is, thing that is, exists. Which is a, a made-up yeah, made disorder for women, just to say that they have something oh, wrong Oh, it's, it's your uterus. Those crazy uteri, they'll just make you do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Something's wrong with your uterus. That's the only explanation. We gotta lock you up. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, so... Oh, was that... Uh, was that black stockings where they talked about hysteria? Honestly, they're kind of blurring together for me. Yeah, I think I think it was, but the, having I mean, the likely. pictures of the women in those um, oh, in those asylums yeah. was chilling. Was, it was chilling, but it was it also felt really positive because um, half the pictures were taken taken by a woman. 
Yeah, and, and, it and just those felt, I thought were beautiful. Yeah, they were really loving portraits. I mean, I guess the chilling part is like, I'm so sorry that this just normal looking yeah. woman had to go through this. Like, she's just yeah. some lady. Like, yeah. what, what was she put through? And for what? For yeah. what? Mm-hmm. yeah. And, and, and I think that's what really, I think, ties this show like all together is the actual evidence you see from these events. So like those photos and like, cause I mean in the mm-hmm. dram- dramatizations, there's photos of the actors and you don't get any sort of realism there. Um, yeah. It's just, an, just another this, way of telling the story. Yeah, exactly. But when you see these real pictures, mm-hmm. you're like, Holy cow. Like this is real. This is an actual, like this is a scan yeah. <laughs> of a photograph. That was uh, taken yeah. in the 1800s. That's or that's or late, you know, one thing that I I one thing that I like about the show and 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 do appreciate about the switch of format is it, that you know there are times when it's like I want to see what that place looked like or I want you know I, I want to see that photo that he's talking about and now I can't like in the show it's like and here it is this is what it yeah. looked like and so I don't necessarily have to go out and like do that kind of homework um just yeah. you know, to sort of save well, my I'm, own curiosity. Um, that makes me think of uh, my favorite murder, which I've been listening to yeah. a lot. Um, so good. And they're they're always like, "Oh, here's a picture of him. Here's a picture of him." I'm like, "Oh, I want to see that picture." Oh man, yeah, I know. I had not to the pictures of not the pictures of the, some of the murders because I don't think I could handle that. But like, no. it, it's that weird um, wanting to see who did it, you know? Yeah. Or man, okay. Have you listened to the episode on the Axe Man of New Orleans? I haven't yet. No. Oh um, man, because she gets into this sort of conspiracy theory, theory stuff on that one, which is really oh, fun. Yeah. Where she's like, well, "Okay, I, I I'm like gonna go off on a thing be, now." <laughs> yeah, I think we've talked about it before because it was in a American Horror Story uh, plot line. Yeah, but like it goes off on this whole thing about like, and yeah. there were all these murders that were going on, like all, th- and it's like they kind, it's the same mo, and like maybe all of this was him, and maybe you know he moved around a whole lot and went out, and, you know, into his old age, he, uh, you know, was still doing this, and then there's this freaky ass photo oh no <laughs> um it's so crazy like i can't really recall how they tied it how they how she you know claimed that it could have been tied to this guy um but supposedly there was this like naval ship that was being decommissioned it was a ship or a submarine or something i think it was a ship it was being decommissioned and so an officer was sent to like take photos of the interior just to catalog it before they decommissioned the ship um, standard procedure. Now it wasn't powered on, so he had to be down there with a flashlight and a camera. Oh, can't do yeah, that. I know. Nope. <laughs> Spooky ass shit already. Yeah, I know, right? Um, but so he's just going through, snap, snap, snapping. Mostly the light that he's got is coming from the flash from the camera. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right. And he sends the photos in. And then he gets a message back from the higher ups like, um, um, who is this in this photo? And he's like, what? And there's nobody there. I was by myself. And there's the photo of this freaky looking old man like coming out of the darkness and this guy didn't even know he was there and it's so scary he's a really scary looking old man (laughs) so you you know the the house we were in last night for the event yeah the basement is pitch black unfinished huge it we had to go down there to find something and it was so scary. I was like, I can't, do this. I can't do this. It was a horror movie basement, and they do photo shoots down there, like scary photos and like cool dark oh. photos. Yeah, I was, I, I was like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get out. Gotta get out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So that's that's one thing I do appreciate about um, this show is that that some of that is just already there for me, so I don't mm-hmm. necessarily have to like just be curious or go and Google yeah. it or whatever. Um, um, but then there is the question of the sort of rigor of it yeah. um, with that Conan Doyle recording, especially where I'm like, what is this? Like, I need more explanation. Yeah, there has to be more to the story than just I, like, I, and here's a recording. What do you think? At least think. tell us where that, like, where it's stored. Like, is it in a museum? Like, who has hands on Yeah, like, where did this I, come I, from? I, I who made it? it? I, need, I need it to be anchored somehow. Because... Uh huh. And so that's what and makes it's so me suspicious. It's so clear too. It's so clear. It's so clear. I mean, and I will say, it's a good impersonation of him. Like, it sounds like his voice on that video yeah. that they mm-hmm. took of him, where he's talking about his knowledge of ghosts. Yeah. Um. Like, it sounds like his voice. Yeah. But um. But yeah, it's it's the fact that they don't give you more makes yeah. me suspicious of it. I'm googling it right now. 
Oh, good. That's nice of you. Printed on 78 RPM vinyl by the gramophone company LTD. Um, took place at scene, uh, Small Queen's Hall in London. The transcript is there. Oh, it doesn't really... Not really information on the background of it. Okay. Um, let's see. People say that only triviality has come through in affecting... Rec- oh, this is... Weird. There's a lot. It's a big chunk of text, and I'm just like, what? Suffice to say, the fact that, you know, there's not really any follow-up about it, any other, like, context for it, makes me dubious. Yeah, and it it does its job in the sort of dramatic reveal sort of way. Mm -hmm. Like, it gets you creeped out and gets you questioning, which I think is, is good for the show because... All of this, because some of this is like, oh, how would they ever believe that? But then it's like, oh, well, now you're starting to believe, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, which is cool, but I think it would have been nice. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, but so, yeah, here's I the thing. Know, yeah. I, I find that a lot of the time, at least in the podcast, his focus is maybe um, the tragedy that comes along with superstition. I mean, it's fun to believe in superstitious stuff. That's why we're listening. That's why we're watching. Because on a certain level, we want these things to be real. We want there to be something out there that we can't explain, that we don't know. Uh, But then it leads to terrible things, like men murdering their wives because they think they're fairies. It, you know, it's... And so I I find it a little um, maybe hypocritical for them to then, like, propagate these things without the kind of rigor that I think that it it is due. Um, And and so it's, it's, and I don't, don't, and it's a, it's a pitfall that I don't feel that he falls prey to in the podcast. And so I do believe that it is studio interference that's causing this sort of tonal yuckiness. Yeah. Because, yeah, at the end of the day, Aaron Mankey's stance on the podcast is always... I don't know. Like, this is the information that we have, and maybe there's another explanation. Maybe this happened. Uh, it's 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 left sort of up to you to interpret things. Um, and when there is further information, he does give it. He says, like, you know, these people that, you know, this, this supposedly happened to didn't exist. Like, this, <laughs> there's, um, gosh, I think it was an episode of the show, so that's, good um you know maybe it wasn't <sighs> now nah, i'm i'm just totally because because of the like overlap between the show and the podcast i'm getting yeah. mixed up <laughs> as to what actually existed uh in the show um there was this story this short bit um you know i think it was the podcast where um he's like there was this insane asylum and these two inmates escaped um, and then they found, it's the bunny man one. I don't know. They, they found Ooh, um, one of them was killed and the other one had like written in his blood like the bunny man was here or something. And then like there's mm-hmm. this bridge that he was supposedly hung from and all of this stuff. And this legend sort of persists in this region of like this psycho killer that escaped from this asylum and is still out there in the woods somewhere. Um, except that that asylum was built after that event supposedly happened. There's no record of either of these two men existing and there's no police reports of any of this stuff being yeah. found. So yeah. like it's a, it's a bit of folklore that still persists in the area and like teens go and like hang out at the bridge and it's scary, but like it's just fiction. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, he takes the time. And so it does put the focus more on, you know, why is the story being told and not necessarily whether or not it's true. Yeah. And I think at least in, in our modern time, having the misinformation or the, 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 the lack of information on stuff like that recording, you might send a, a, a viewer into a spiral, a Google spiral, just hunting it down to figure it out for themselves, or they might get really excited and, and want to research spiritualism. They probably won't go a, a bit dark with it, but you never Fair. know. You never Fair. know. And um, yeah. I mean, there is something I think irresponsible about withholding information. A little bit, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I, I mean, it's a little sinister. Yeah, they're not withholding it because it's irrelevant. They're withholding it because it's a buzzkill. Yeah. <laughs> you know? 
it's 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 i don't know under i hope they do like a they i hope they do like an amend amended or like you know how some reality shows they'll be like oh we're going back to the show again but with like um here's a little, here's a under, new footnote, look at footnotes, that. And, footnotes and stuff and and yeah. uh, special footage so i hope they do like um like little behind the scenes kind of thing and i think they might have some on there i just haven't checked yet yeah, I'm not sure. There are other videos, but I don't know if they're just like... I think they were just trailers. Yeah. But yeah. that would be interesting. Or like a commentary even. Yeah, I I, I do want to... I mean, we're, we're, um, we're running a little low on time, but I yeah. do want to sort of talk about um, the idea of like m- monster stories and why we tell them and what... You know what? Because that's that's sort of what they they do try to get into is yeah. the idea of like, and this reflects this fear. Like, this is why this story is being told. This is what this means culturally. Yeah. So um, yeah. I I read this really interesting article about um, even now, like the popularity of zombie stories versus vampire stories actually correlates to whether a Democrat or a Republican is in office. Whoa. During Republican years, we're scared of zombies, and during Democrat years, we're scared of vampires. That's so interesting, isn't it? Wow! Like that's and, those and, and are the movies the, the weird that are thing being is made. That it totally makes sense to me. Yeah, like Clinton years. That's when we got interview with the vampire. Uh, you know, Bush uh, Junior. We got you know a big lot of zombie movies. That's when the zombie craze happened. Uh, like, it's kind yeah. of interesting. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's like, maybe, I mean, you know, it's, it, you can really only speculate, but it's like, I get that, like, during Republican years, we're afraid of, like, assimilation and mob mentality. And I mean, you know, it's, at this point, zombies have sort of become a, a metaphor for, like, consumerism. Consumerism and, and also, like, um, very apocalyptic, um, post-apocalyptic, um, mm-hmm. also, like, yeah, yeah. Whereas vampires, it's sort of like a, a a fear of like being too hedonistic and liberal. Yeah. You know, the <laughs> idea that like, you know, it's sexy and it's and then you know, there's the sort of parasitic yeah. side to it. Like, I totally get how those fears connect with the fears about those particular political parties. Yeah. Um, and so things like that, where it's just like, God, like it's crazy what we're afraid of and when and why. Yeah. And the the interesting thing about they made a tonic is like they're afraid of losing their family or more of their family to tuberculosis and the fear isn't irrational but their supposed cause is irrational of this yeah it's it's their former loved one sucking the life out of them from the grave like how (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah on one level it is sort of you know this this explanation for for what's going on in the world around you that you don't understand but then you know as we we continue to tell these stories as we have explanations for them so like what what are what are what are we still telling these stories for like why do we still tell vampire stories when we know that they're not real you know it's one thing to tell a story of a thing that you think might be out there it's another to continue to tell that story after it's been disproven yeah, and it and it and, and it's not just like because we do we do come up with new reasons for some of them depending on who's writing it, but like for the most part the the rules stay the same of the monster. The rule of the monster stays the same, um, and mm-hmm. it's just so interesting, especially in in the Made of Tonic. Like it's it it's the birth of the modern American vampire, and it has nothing to do with how we see them these days. Almost like you know, other than life force sucking. Yeah. They, it- yeah, it's sort of somebody returning from the grave to to come and kill you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, beyond that, it's it's I mean, I guess there's I mean, there's the claim in that that they're like drinking their blood away, yeah. but that's, you know, that's the connection to consumption, to tuberculosis, this this bl- blood loss that comes along with that yeah. disease. And then also like the the way that they 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 solve the problem is by taking out the heart. Yes. Which is how you kill the a vampire. Heart is the... Getting the heart, you know. Um, Stabbing that. Heart. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I have an answer for like why we keep. I think part of it is like humans are so in, ingrained in us is this want to 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 share a story 
like not only to tell one but to hear one and to like put your own spin on it because it's been so ingrained in in our history um and these ones are just they, they, they just excite us and even if they don't like like think of greek myths like they were used to explain yeah. like natural phenomenon and like they're still super interesting you know Mm -hmm. Well, and you, so you didn't finish the whole uh, six episodes. The final episode is a werewolf one. Okay. Um, and the dramatizations for that were really interesting. Most of the story was, most of the episode was about this story of this, um, and it, again, this is one that I knew from the podcast, um, Bedburg, Germany, this, in, in, um, in the Middle Ages, there was a werewolf. There was a man who was executed for being a werewolf. Mm -hmm. um, he was likely a serial killer. Yeah. Um, who, you know, was mentally ill and, you know, I mean, there is an actual, they talk about this actual medical diagnosis, uh, uh, psychological diagnosis of lycanthropy, which is somebody who believes yeah. that they are turning into an animal or they are an animal. Yeah. And so it's possible that this man, like he believed he was a werewolf and he was murdering people and they executed him for it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that is one that's still like is very relevant like even if you know we're not necessarily going to believe this person when they say they're a werewolf these villagers may have well, yeah, and it, <laughs> believed and a, a, him a modern example but it doesn't really matter a modern example or a modern realistic example would be from hannibal where there's that serial killer who like adorns himself with the bones of animals and gives himself teeth and claws you know He's basically a murder furry. Yeah, basically. I mean, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's like the premise, right, of the original story, you yeah. know? Yeah, someone who's, you know, becoming an animal and doing things about it. Um, yeah, it was a really interesting yeah, story, I, a really interesting I, I could probably handle that one. I'll probably go back and watch that one. But I like this, the, the one about the, the ice pick lobotomy. I don't think I could handle yeah. that. <laughs> and then it was pretty. And then the, the doll one, I might be able to handle but not at night. <laughs> Robert the Doll, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's honestly, I, that's an interesting. So that's a that's a very popular story of Robert mm -hmm. the Doll. Um, and I mean, yeah, I'll say like I don't think it's actually because I mean it is still sort of a question mark. It's like there were claims that this doll got up and walked around, but you don't see that because you know the only people who really saw it are the people whose sanity is in question. Okay. Um, there is, there is one scene where it's sort of implied that maybe this doll is like. On the other side of the door. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just a doll. And then, like, maybe some bad stuff is happening because okay. of it. Um, so, yeah, the dramatization's not really okay, scary yeah. at all. It's just a little creepy ghosts and, and, like, haunted objects kind of creep me out a bit. So I'll see what I can do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's not... I, that's the interesting question with Robert the doll is I don't know that it's necessarily, I mean, quite a haunted object because I, I don't think it's ever implied okay. that Robert is being haunted by a particular spirit. It's just sort of like a malevolent doll. Got it. Got it. <laughs> you know, it's like he's just, he's more of an imaginary friend okay. than he is a ghost. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably, yeah. I'll probably take know, a look at both that one and the werewolf one. But the, the like. The, yeah. Yeah. Like, Anything bodily, I usually can't do these days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a... Re well, and that one, you know, that's more of a sort of a rational, like, immediate yeah, fear. Yeah, and it's I like, would... That's a I, thing. To like, anybody, that to really anybody happened. wanting to, like, <laughs> watch these, for the most part, they're not too gruesome. They're not, like, gory. They're not... No, yeah, not at there's all. Some, uh, and they made a tonic. They sort of... Uh, anything that would have been gross, they kind of... Um, almost show as like uh i don't know they, they visualize it with animation usually so it's like yeah and like very stylized, yeah it's very stylized um, almost removed. symbolic um yeah there's a lot of cutting away a lot of the, the um the werewolf one can get a little like gruesome with like uh, and then it's yeah, blood yeah, spraying yeah. but like it's not you're not seeing people being rendered yeah. limb from limb or anything like that <laughs> it's uh it's pretty um safe for tv yeah and, and anybody so. um watching that the, i would also give a little warning for black stockings like it's really intense in terms of like trigger warning for physical and emotional 
uh, yeah, domestic abuse. Sure. Like that's that's definitely one that can be emotionally really difficult to yeah. handle. Not necessarily for gore reasons, but just for you know personal and traumatic yeah. reasons. But it's also like of the ones I saw, the most well put together and important. I think. I agree. I think that that one stuck with me the most. I'd say that's sort of the star episode is Black Stockings. Mm-hmm. Well, do we have anything else we want to talk about it? Um, you know, I, I feel like I've probably made all of the points sort of that I that I had to make. I will say, like, if you enjoy this show, go and listen to the podcast because I think it's better. <laughs> I, I would say <laughs> I think if it's you'd better. like the genre of the sort of over-dramatized um, yeah, history it's, channel, it's not, you know, yeah, all those. Uh, this is a, a yeah. better version of those. Um so if you like those, yeah, you'll yeah, probably sure, like this enough. as well. Or if you like folklore. Uh-huh. Um, and it's like a mixture of folklore and, um, oh, I always forget the name of it. It's like um, like a modern folklore kind of. Uh, urban legend? Kind of I don't know. Urban legend. Thank you. That's the exact word. <sighs> yeah, urban legend. There's a lot of urban legend mixed into yeah. it, which I, I, I love. You it. know, as a, as a little aside, just uh, last minute aside, I'm kind of questioning the um the lobotomy episode because really? well i don't know that it's really necessarily a, a relevant story for the series it's not folklore it's a real thing that okay. happened like there's no question mm. of what occurred it's not folklore it's like yeah this is a historical event a historical occurrence yeah. this doctor was performing transorbital lobotomies and he performed thousands of them and this is Document so they didn't fact. tie it into some other thing? Yeah, there was nothing supernatural or... Oh, wow. Like, it was just like... Yeah, he Creepy. was performing lobotomies <laughs> and it was bad. And, like, maybe you can sympathize and understand that he thought he was doing good and he didn't know what else to do. And they were in sort of a bad situation with mental illness treatment at the time and people believed mm-hmm. that like th- that these patients were better off this way because they were curbing their violent behaviors but ultimately they were just rendering people you know with brain damage and there, there wasn't anything oh like supernatural or spooky happening it was just like yeah this is just a really tragic yeah. thing that happened in not too distant history so it, it's a it was a weird choice i thought um, that made me think of, uh, oddly enough, Bojack Horseman, which I just finished. Oh. <laughs> um, l- there's a character that receives a lobotomy in, in, in that show, and it's so tragic. Yeah, I mean, it's just the story of this real-life tragedy that happened. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's some really great stuff that drives it home. Um, there's this scene where, you know, at the near the end of the episode, his partner's like, dude... Like, maybe we need to shut this operation down because now there are medications out there that are basically doing, you know, yeah. pre- preventing the same effects without brain damage. And I don't know that we're really helping anybody. We're just making people easier to care for. Um, you know, it's like it, this is this is a mercy to caregivers, not patients. And mm-hmm. he's like, no, these people, they're grateful. I've helped them. I've got these Christmas cards. Who receive? What doctor receives Christmas cards? And like they spill all over the floor. And mm-hmm. he's like, his patient, his his partner is just kind of like disgusted with him and leaves. And then uh-huh. the the doctor opens up one of the Christmas cards, and it's just scribbles inside. Like, oh my goodness. That's it really so drives. Uh, yeah, it just drives <laughs> home. Like, no, like he wow. believes. He really believes yeah. that he's doing good, but like he's just he's just ruining people. Well, and again, oddly, in Bojack Horseman. Um, so uh, Bojack's grandmother, who I don't believe he ever met, um, gets a lobotomy because she's just so distraught after her her son dies in, in war. Um, oh my and... gosh! Like that's um, that's almost exactly something that happens in this episode oh, wow. of Lore, except that it, she doesn't actually. His his wife. Um, they lose their adult. That's weird. Like I wonder if it's based on this story because yeah, it, they lost their be, yeah. their son who was a soldier. He died mm-hmm. in an accident like right after coming home from the war, and she's so, so grief stricken that she like that you know she maybe wants a lobotomy, and he doesn't end up lobotomizing her. But like the question is like would she be happier if she just yeah. was like brain dead yeah and it doesn't it doesn't necessarily perfectly correlate because it's like her husband makes her get this lobotomy mm-hmm. um but yeah it so sounds sad. very inspired by but yeah it, it, i mean it, you could definitely see the connection um but 
later in the series, it really comes back to haunt the characters because she can't be a proper mother anymore. Yeah. Um, she, she, she stops looking after her daughter and, it, and, and like, I, I, I want to say that like a fire, there's like a fire because she's not paying attention. <laughs> because she's incapable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it, like, oh, yeah. Interesting uh, this, this, that's topic. my like odd, like <laughs> endorsement of Bojack Horseman. I didn't get it at first, but it's like total, like sad cartoon, like, <laughs> yeah, I think we talked about it a little bit with um with our last guest. Um but yeah, it, so they, I just thought it was a weird topic. Yeah. To... Well, and, and that's very very much in the vein of like the Discovery networks and all their sort of Yeah, I just thought it was a yeah. weird twist, especially when you've only got six episodes. Like to have this one that right? just seems so um thematically different. I think having six episodes is a good amount. I know that seems sure, kind of yeah. kind of little for some shows, but it, they're they're longer episodes. They're like forty five minutes or something like that. Um, I thought mm-hmm. that was six is a good number, especially for like them trying out a new sh- a new like this is not something that usually gets put on you know Amazon or Netflix that sort of and, thing. And especially you know it's adapting podcasts into television shows right? is still <laughs> a pretty big experiment. Like that's you know the and and I'd say this it, it does. Um, outline sort of the what, how good it can be, but also the pitfalls. Like there are definitely some problems with this adaptation, and yeah. so there's mm-hmm. still a lot to be sort of learned and how to properly adapt a podcast into a TV show. Yeah, and you know, hopefully, it's the first of of many because I think my favorite murder would be great. Yeah, I mean, but do it sort of drunk history style. Oh my god, it... that'd be so good. <laughs> Where you've just still got the two of them like sitting on a couch telling the story. That, that's to each how you imagine. you cut away to that's, like that's how you imagine photos in your head and... when you're listening. Yeah, I think that it would work out so well to do it that way. <laughs> wow! And that way they don't have to be like, oh, we'll put a link to the photo. Right. Oh, you can Google it. Like they can just put it up, and yeah. we don't have to. We're, yeah, I think that would be really, really fun. <laughs> <laughs> One, and they're also like they like try to make stuff a little lighthearted because it's scary. <laughs> yeah, and it's horrible help. and awful, and so they want to sort of cut the tension. Yeah, but and that's another thing um, that I just really appreciate about my favorite murder is they're so respectful towards the victims. Like it's always they they never glorify murderers. They never, you know, it's always like that person is sick, and we need to think about you know this person that this happened to. Yeah. Like they're the important person in this story, um, of the victim. This is totally off topic, and we don't have to put it in anywhere. But um, did we did, did we talk about Mind Hunter yet? No. Yeah, I, I, I'll put this as like a little bonus, or you know, our little yeah. bonus episodes or something. Because yeah, I haven't. I'm really, really curious, and I haven't I binged, watched it I yet. Binged and I binged it love, in like less than two full days. Holy cow! I love Jonathan Groff. I, love I him didn't even too. know about this show. I spent like <laughs> half an hour talking to my coworker Leah about Jonathan Groff and our love for him. <laughs> um, no, he's fabulous. Um, so in the, in in this show, he oh he's it's he's such a complicated character. He doesn't seem so at first, but by the end, like interviewing serial killers, you're gonna get fucked up. Uh huh. It it, it kind of sounds. I mean, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about it, but it kind of sounds like maybe it's a little closer to like the Hannibal novels than the Hannibal adaptations are. You know, where it's like, you know, maybe it's, it's it, this character is closer to Will Graham in Red Dragon than, like, TV Will Graham is. Well, it's... How do I... It, it's very realistic, and, it, and I think it focuses more on um, the relationships um, of the, the FBI agents mm-hmm. than the 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 discoveries they're making actually it's probably half and half um Mm -hmm. so you you see a lot that they go through as people these fbi agents and then you also sort of see like you don't get a lot of different serial killers you get a couple big ones yeah well and yeah and i'd say that that's that is sort of closer to what um the books, the, you know, especially like Red Dragon are, you know, it's like Red Dragon is the story of Will Graham 
investigating the tooth fairy murders Mm -hmm. like that's it that's what that book is so like it's not all of that weirdy stuff that we love about the hannibal tv show and and, and (laughs) honestly the really cool thing about it that i found was um from my favorite murder they talked about um i don't remember his like serial killer name but like he strangled all those co-eds oh yeah i don't remember the the murderer name either but he's the first person they interview Oh. Yeah. So it's just like seeing it from both sides of like, I got the whole rundown of his whole um, story from My Favorite Murder. And then you go into the show and it's like, oh, they're interviewing him. Yee. And it's, it's not like the real interviews, but it's like. Yeah, but it's. But I mean, the transcripts exist or like the notes exist. So uh-huh. th- they're it's, basically. It's a, it's a recreation. Yeah. Of... And it's so crazy because he's like so sure of himself anyway yeah oh man uh it was so funny because yeah that last episode of lore the werewolf one they start start talking about serial killers and they go Uh into this whole thing you know to sort of tie it into like contemporary serial Mm -hmm. killer consciousness they talk about the son of sam murderer yeah and um and then i had like he's in mindhunter as well because that's happening and that's what's starting to make them think about maybe there's a pattern Oh, wow, that's so funny. Because, yeah, just, like, like the day before I watched that episode of Lore, I listened to a recent yeah. episode of My Favorite Murder yeah. about the Son of Sam, yeah, and I was uh-huh. like, oh, Yeah, it's so weird. cool. That's so cool how it all connects. <laughs> and, like, yeah. uh, another really interesting thing is, like, you sort of assume that all of these serial killers are going to have, like, similar, like, oh, very intellectual, very, like, Cho- very particular about what words they choose. You think they're all going to be like that, but they're all that, yeah, so Hannibal dim- Lecter style. Yeah, like... and and the first guy's like that, but the, the intelligent the, psychopath. Exactly. The first the first guy they interview is like that, but then the the two others after that they're like completely different, and it's so strange. But then that makes their job both easier and harder because they're like, okay, what connects them? And then it sort of points out the things that they can look out for to stop them. Well, I definitely need to watch mine. You need to. Now. It's like <laughs> I think I'd love it's it. It's not like the best show ever, but it, it's it's gonna suck you in. Like I think it's probably got a lot of the stuff that I like because obviously oh. these days I'm really into true crime oh, stories. Yeah. You'll, you'll... And I mean, mm-hmm. Mr. Jonathan Groff is always a delight. This is a really <laughs> different character for him in some ways, but it's like he also doesn't change himself too much for it. Like he still sounds yeah. like himself, which I mean. I don't know. How can you change that? I don't know. Anyway, but by the end, you might not recognize him as, because it, he changes so much. Because, but like, mm-hmm. again, who, who wouldn't? You know? But <laughs> yeah, I would say, I would say a content warning for anybody listening. Like, they do show crime scene photos. Um, yeah, this is a crime show. Yeah. So. The first, there's not really any actual murder that you witnessed except for in the very first, like, 10 minutes. There's, like, mm-hmm. an inaction kind of thing happening. But yeah, it's, there's some some gnarly topics on that one, but like just prepare yourself. But it's real good. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so last minute, I want to um, recommend a couple of podcasts I've been listening to because they're just so fun. Yeah, I, I want to. I, I want to start doing this if I find a new podcast. Yeah, I want to like give do it. it. I, love and, it. I mean, obviously, I'm mostly going to be recommending podcasts that are a lot more um, popular than ours. So I don't know how much my <laughs> recommendation is going to mean, but I still want to tell people what's good. Because I like it. Um, I've been listening to a couple of podcasts made by the same dude whose name escapes me. I feel bad. Um, but I, I found a Myths and Legends podcast. It was recommended Ooh. to me by Stitcher because I've been listening to lore. Um, and <laughs> this is, you know, similar sort of thing where this guy is telling you the story, you know, myths and legends. Like he's talking about folk tales. He's talking about fairy tales. He's talking about myths. Um, but he, especially as the series goes on, he tells them in a really fun sort of conversational way. Like it's very much this writer's version of these stories. You know, he's paraphrasing, he's, you know, putting his own little spin on it. He's, you know, making up some funny dialogue. Like he's, he's telling these stories in his fashion and it's really entertaining and fun. Uh, he starts, you know, the series sort of starts out, he's talking about, like, Arthurian legend, and he tells, like, the whole, uh, Volsung saga, like, <laughs> that the, you know, <laughs> Wagner's ring cycle is based on, and it's, it's, like, four episodes that he's just talking about this saga, but 
especially the later stuff, is just really, really fun sort of tellings of these <laughs> folk tales that like a lot of it is stuff I've never heard before. Um, very fun stuff. And then he has this other one um, called Fictional, which is basically the same concept, but he's retelling classic literature. Oh. Uh, so it's really, really fun for him to like do this two part episode where he's just like paraphrasing Dante's Inferno. <laughs> And it's just really entertaining. Like well, I, I know it sounds weird, but I like not it. Not everybody wants to read Dante, you know. But you kind of want to know what it's about. That's how I feel yeah. about a lot of classic lit. Like I oh, apologize, yeah. like to all the English <laughs> teachers out there and all of the classic lit authors that are dead now. Like I want to know these stories, but I'm not gonna necessarily sit down and read the Time Machine. So can't this boy just tell me the story of it? I'm much more likely to do that. Uh, so well, and honestly, like again, going back to what I said earlier in the whole folklore thing, like you want to hear somebody tell a story because you're more engaged. You get a like experience the subtleties in their mm-hmm. speech. Um, sure you can get great and amazing stuff out of reading too but like there's something really exciting about well and it's like a friend telling you about something they read or whatever and like he does some great sort of editorializing sometimes when he's like and if you're wondering why they decided that this was a good idea to do this thing i am too like where he's just like (laughs) yeah this part's weird and silly and i don't get it i don't know like just go with it that (laughs) makes me think um so they they made a, a prequel show to um to Sex in the City called The Carrie Diaries. Yeah. Um, And I stopped watching it about halfway through the first season, but my best friend watched the whole thing. It was so much more enjoyable to hear her recount the whole thing to me than to actually watch it. Well, yeah, I've been doing that with with Dylan, with my brother, and Marvel Comics. He got this subscription to, um, like, the digital backlog of, like, all the Marvel Comics. And so, especially for a while there, he was just reading comics, like, on his lunch break, like, every single day. So, like, he'd come home, I'd come home from work, and I'd be like, all right, what did you read today? And he'll, like, tell me the story about the Hulk. Oh, that's so cool. And, like, I I don't want to read those comics. Like, he was reading them for me because a lot of them are just not fun to read. They kind of suck. Like, 70s (laughs) superhero comics aren't good. Yeah. But like, I kind of want to mm-hmm. know what happens in them. So yeah. for him to be like, "Oh boy, let me tell you about Moon Knight," is <laughs> very fun. Um, so yes, yeah. uh, myths and legends podcast and fictional podcast. They are both a good time if you want to hear a funny person tell you some interesting stories. Uh, I have just a couple quick ones. Um, so my a couple of friends from college they do a video game podcast. It's really well done. Mm. It's called Fans of the Genre. Um, Definitely gonna check that out. They are wonderful, and they they know what they're talking about. They love video games, and they play a lot of video games. They they they're basically video game journalists because they do a podcast, so they, they know what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, then we have um, Crimea Riverdale, which is a Riverdale <laughs> um, recap episode episode recap podcast hosted by um, Mikey. Mikey from Movies with Mikey, and then also um, oh, what's his face um, from Rooster Teeth from Rooster Teeth. Uh, Gion Reisinger. Um, yeah, and then... Yeah, I believe we, we talked about it a yeah. little bit on our Queer Comics episode. Oh, yeah, we did, but I just like to make sure... You know, <laughs> the, the new episodes are coming out of Riverdale, so, like, if you watch it, it's really great to follow up with that. Um, and then the final one, I want to... Actually, two more. Um, Making Gay History Season 3 is coming out. It's an amazing thing if you want to learn about gay history and the real shit that happened and the real people that did it like it's not mm. just sto- like there's more than just stonewall like yeah there's yes. somebody like more you than or- stonewall and harvey milk yeah there's there's people like you and me doing crazy amazing shit so highly recommend that there's also he also does a book it's uh hosted by eric marcus he was a uh, a journalist and he's incredible and then the final one is um the poetry magazine podcast uh, it's the editors from Poetry Magazine, which is one, like, a really big popular periodical for poetry. Um, they have a, uh, a monthly one and a weekly one, and they just have, uh, people from the issue read their poems, and they talk about them, and it's really cool. Because, you know, not everybody gets to, to hear somebody explain or, like, talk about the cool parts of a poem. Um, and that's why I like it. It's like, once a week, I'll just be like, oh, let's listen to this poem, and then hear people say what they, uh, thought about it, so... Cool. Well, yeah. gosh, now everyone out there has plenty to watch and read if they're bored. Like, yeah. <laughs> you got all your recommendations you could ever need. There you For go. Sure. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so brief announcement. We are uploading uh, tomorrow, um, as of when this episode goes up. Tomorrow is Halloween, and we are uploading a special bonus episode um, in honor of All Hallows Read, um, which is this great project spearheaded by Neil Gaiman, where you're, you just read and share scary stories for Halloween, buy your friend scary books, read your own scary stories, write your own scary stories. So, um... We are going to be uploading an, a special episode tomorrow where we are each going to share a, a scary short story that we enjoy. Um, so if you just want to pop that on and have a fun Halloween listening to some spooky stories, uh, I <laughs> hope that you will join us for that. That does it for today's episode. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us and like us. Or like the video if you like us. <laughs> Like us if you like us, okay? <laughs> uh, you can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, and Anchor.fm. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. Check us out on Twitter at LitMeritPod for updates and news. And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember, no, no guilty, guilty pleasures. pleasures.